Okay, now in this section, we'll try to understand the WAN connection, how it is built with some basic understanding on the lease lines. Uh, if you just go back with some of the basic classes, what we have done, we have already seen how the LAN setup is built. So in the LAN setup, generally we have some computers in the LAN, probably computers and all are connected to a central switch via a straight cable, the UTP straight cable which we use and even the same straight cable is used to connect from the switch to the router. So same thing in the LAN. But now the question is what about the WAN connection? How the connectivity from my Hyderabad branch office or to Dubai branch office, different locations, uh, how the how these two particular branch offices are going to connect? What is, what, is, what is the different kinds of WAN connection we need to use where I can allow my branches to connect? Now to make that possible, what we need to do is we need to contact the service border. Now we need to contact the local service border or any service border who can provide you the connectivity. Okay, which means the cable which is required for you to connect between your own branch offices has to be provided by the service border. Because I cannot lay my own cable from, from one location to another location, we need to take a line from service border. Now there are different kinds of connections which generally provides. Initially we have something called lease lines where we can have a separate dedicated WAN connection given by the provider. And then we, we also have some kind of a circuit switching technology where some telephoning network or telephone network can be used for sending your data over, uh, over the, uh, from one location to another location. Or we have some packet switching technologies like frame relay, ATM kind of technologies which can be used for providing the connection. So more on detail on this lease lines, ISDN and frame relay kind of connections. I'll be getting into that more in detail in my next sections. Uh, I have a separate section dedicated for the WAN technologies, but and even I have, a, I have some more kind of WAN connections which are used in modern networks like MPLS, Metro Ethernet, VPNs, Probably I'll be getting into this kind of uh, these different types of WAN connections much more in detail in a separate session uh, where I'll be discussing on WAN technologies. Okay, so at this point of time, I'm going to give some idea on how exactly the normal basic lease LAN setup is done. Okay, so let's take an example. I got a LAN here, which is my Hyderabad branch here. I got a, all the computers in the LAN, and they all are connected to my centralized switch. And the same thing here also, I got a centralized LAN where I have all the computers connected to a centralized switch. Now I want to ensure that the users sitting in the LAN in Hyderabad should be able to communicate with the users connecting on a different network. So for that I need to contact the service provider who is going to provide me a line which will be connecting from one router to another router. So let's say I contact one of my service provider and he's going to provide me a lease line connection and Let's try to understand when you take a lease line connection, how it's going to be. So in general, when you take a lease line connection, the router connects to a lease line modem generally called as CSU DSU modems. So we call them as CSU DSU modem, channel service unit, uh, data service unit modems we call them as, or we can call them as V.35 modems. So these are typically your lease line modems which are provided by the service provider and placed in your location and uh, typically they look like this it depends on different kinds of devices you can see it's a live live diagram where you have a serial cable connecting here this is my serial port and i got that v.35 cable here and this v.35 cable is going to connect to my modem here on this modem different types of converters are there and then from there you got a service for a line which is coming and connecting on this particular modem and this is this is a normal connection, you know, we can say. And this this is my LAN port, which is going to connect to my switch. It's going to connect to my switch from where all my users are sitting in my LAN are connected. So typically, you know, that that look it looks like this. It's just a small diagram here. Now this part we call as customer premises equipment. And same way here also we call it as customer premises equipment. Now, if anything goes wrong up to here, it is the responsibility of the customer to ensure that to fix it because it is a customer premises. If you find any, any cable issue, connectivity issue here, it's your job to fix it. Any problem in the LAN between the computers to switch 
or switch to piece switch to router switch to pcs it's your responsibility to fix it now after that it's not my responsibility so from here it's something service border uh, boundary starts here this is a complete service border boundary here now what service border will do is service border will have a two pair wire mostly a two pair wire which is going and connecting on the exchange office of the service border nearest exchange and they probably they use some g.703 modems typically long distance modems we can say and from there it's going to connect to a big device called max here a multiplexer same way you got a two pair wire which is coming from your router to going to another modem over there and then connects to a big device called max now from max to max there is a fiber cable which is pre-existing fiber cable laid by the service borders and which is connecting the major cities uh, there is a fiber line which is already laid by the service borders which is connecting different cities and different countries and that the service border will have those service the service border will have a pre-existing line connecting all the exchange offices now in this if i if i just uh, talk about like what what exactly max is going to do is max uh, if you know max is multiplexer we can say multiplexer is a device which is going to uh, which is going to provide multiple signals like like take an example i got an i got my hyderabad branch office here and this is the exchange office and if you if you just think about a normal way like in in hyderabad i'm not the only customer who is taking the line so there might be another customer also connecting on the max and i got another customer also connecting on the max and also one more customer connecting on the max more similar way like like i got a connection here and another customer connecting on the max here now the multiplexer is a device which is going to allow you to send uh, even though they might be going on the same cable or same fiber cable but still multiplexer allows you to differentiate the signals each and every signal so that they don't interfere with each other or they don't disturb each other so something like that so that's something what multiplexer is going to do uh, that that's it's going to do this kind of job uh, in the service for networks so mostly we don't have not, we have nothing to do over here because that is not in our control we have nothing to do here on this particular part our job is on the router one on the router two our job is in the lan and our job is in the lan and this is something what given by the service spawn we are just trying to understand how the the wire connection is built by the service border if i am taking a dedicated lease line okay okay so this is how the wire connection is built by the service border but when it comes to uh, when it comes to our side we don't really bother much because as long as we have a connection uh, we don't really bother on that so this is how the typical wan setup is built by the service border if you are taking a lease line connection so in this setup you got plenty of devices involved like uh, the modems max and the routers we got a lot of devices involved and depending upon the kind of the modem you are using on the csu dsu you have different types of converters but this end will be uh, will be connecting on the router and this end will be either 16 pin connector the one which we use or it can be 26 pin connector and the other end of the cable it depends upon the more different modem types the csu device csu device kind of thing now the next thing we need to understand in this setup we got two different kinds of devices we have dt and dc now dt dc concept is more like if you are using a dial up dial up internet connection let's say i'm going to connect my pc and this pc is connecting to my a uh, modem let's say i'm connecting to my modem one of the modem dial up modem and then it is connecting to my telecom line and from the telecom line probably i'm trying to access my internet or other job now in this in this setup if you just try to see my pc pc is generally we call as a dt device and the modem we call as dc device data communication equipment now what this dc going to do is it is going to generate some clocking so which is going to generate some speed uh, which is going to allow you to send the signals uh, for longer distances okay so it's a, it's it's going to generate some signaling which will allow you to send uh, over longer distances over the service power network 
So this modem is responsible for generating that clock speed, we call it as. Okay, we, in other words, we simply call it as clocking. And whereas the PC here is not going to do anything, it is going to just accept the signaling or accept the signaling and that, that's the only thing it is going to do. Okay, so the same kind of setup we have in our routers also. Here also we got some DC device, we got some DC device which are more like a service product devices and then we got a DT. We got a DT that is my router. So if you want to have communication from DT to DT, uh, you need to send over the service point network and service point network uh, for longer distances we need some, uh, some modems which will do some clocking, which will generate some clocking which helps your data to send over longer distances over the service point network. Okay, so here also we got some DT DC devices. Uh, typically these are terminologies which we use for identifying the different kinds of devices. So this is how the real WAN connection you will have in general in the production networks. So in our labs, what we are going to do is we are going to use one cable called back to back cable. Now the back to back cable, it will be 60 pin on both the sides or it can be 26 pin also. So you'll find some back to back cables um, which can be used. What we are going to do is we are going to have two routers in the same location. So which means I have a router here in Hyderabad. So probably and here one more router here and these two routers are we are going to assume that they are in the same location they are in the different locations but uh, practically they are in the same locations and then I'm going to connect this cable one side of the cable on this port and the other side of the cable on the other port and then we are going to connect this back to back cable between the two routers which is going to emulate my complete copper wire modem and mux setup so which means in my lab scenarios, I'm going to use this back-to-back -back cable for providing the connectivity between the two devices. So if you want to set up your home lab, probably you need some back-to-back -back cable which is going to simulate uh, the complete exchange setup in your in your labs. Okay, so we don't use a real real WAN connection, which is something not possible in simulating in the lab scenarios.